to this topic is we will discuss the dynamics on uniform circular motion this is part one of the video series on the dynamics of uniform circular motion and this is focusing on the derivation of the formulas of the uniform circular motion and after that we will solve problems in a flat curve situations now why is it that we need to study uniform circular motion now this concept actually is very important for the reason that we can provide the theoretical idea or theoretical explanation of why is it that that a car or a motorcycle can can run onto the wall no? because in the rotor ride the riders are riding on the wall and we wonder why it happens and we also uh, witnesses the roller coaster why is it that uh, it was safe when you are riding the roller coaster what are the reasons why the object stays at the top of the circle of the roller coaster okay then another question is why is it that we need to slow down on the curve when we are riding a car why it needs to slow down and there are also curve in the construction of the highway national highway that the curve are bunk means the curve is was constructed in incline why is it that we need to bunk the curve now take note that we need to bunk the curve it's because that it is to prevent from accident so in order to protect the riders from an accident in a curb with a high speed then we need to bank it more more angle to be or more bank angle more safe is the car moves around the circle so the question is why okay why is it that all the activities happens on the curve okay so therefore in this module series of videos we will understand the principle of the uniform circular motion we will solve problems in this video series okay so we will derive first the formula then after that we'll have one example then uh, the next video is talking about the application problems, other application problems for the uniform circular motion. Okay, consider a road. This is a road. And this is a top view. You are uh, looking at the top. Or this is an aerial view. Suppose I have the object whose mass is M and this object moves in this road direction. So suppose the object moves at a constant speed. When we say constant speed, means that the initial speed is equal to the final in magnitude. Okay? So in kinematics, we say that if the object moves at a constant speed, then acceleration is zero. Vice versa, if the acceleration is zero, the object moves at a constant speed. Now, what's the effect of the rider when when the uh, object moves at a constant speed? Just like you are riding in a car or a bus inside the uh, inside. Then suppose the bus is moving at a constant speed. Then. The effect is you can move anywhere in the car without disturbance. Which means that 
you're just like walking inside your room if the object moves at a constant speed. Why? Because according to Newton, if we have zero acceleration, then we have a zero force. Now take note, the reason why uh, it is difficult to move in a moving object, it's because of the force applied to the riders. And that will be the force also applied to the car. So therefore, in this case, there is no net force for the reason that there we have acceleration zero. So the object moves at a constant speed. So therefore, you can walk around anywhere and you will not be disturbed. Okay? It's like you're riding an airplane. So once, once uh, the airplane moves at a constant speed, then you are now allowed to to go to CR, okay? You can walk, but if the speed is not at a constant speed, you are not advised to move inside the airplane, okay? So that's the effect of having a uniform circuit. is a uniform motion, okay? So the question is. If this object moves at a constant speed, meaning means the acceleration is zero and there is no net external force and we have no problem with regards to moving inside that vehicle. The question is, if this object moves in a curve, okay, suppose another object moves in a curve, but this time, okay, we have, okay, we have still different or uh, the same Velocity, whatever velocity in this straight line, the same velocity. So, therefore, if this is uniform motion, then therefore we still have the uniform motion within the curve. The question is, is it safe to walk inside the car if the car turns around a curve? The answer is no. You are not allowed to walk inside the car if the car moves around the curve. Why? Because you tend to move away from the circle. Okay? You can notice that when you are riding a car and the car turns to the right for example, then you are you are actually the feeling is you are moving in opposite direction. But the truth is you are moving a straight line and it is the car that travels or turns around the or towards the right and it's also the support is because of the law of inertia the first law you are maintaining your velocity but the car changes its direction and you are moving a straight line okay so therefore in other words when the particle moves around the curve you are not safe to walk around the car or any vehicle that uh, rotates around the circle why it happens even though we have a constant velocity now take note we have a constant velocity but the acceleration is not equal to zero okay if if this object moves in a straight line okay if you have a constant velocity then the acceleration is zero so therefore the net external force is also zero then there is no disturbance around the straight line but when this object turns around the curve even if you have a constant velocity, your acceleration is not equal to zero. So if the acceleration is not equal to zero, Newton says your force also is not equal to zero. Why? Because force is directly proportional to the uh, to the acceleration. Whatever direction of acceleration will be the direction of the force. Okay, so therefore, why is it that acceleration is not equal to zero? There is no change in velocity. Okay, there is no change in velocity, constant. Why is it that we have the acceleration? Now remember that velocity is not a scalar quantity. Okay, which means that velocity, it has a magnitude and it has the 
direction. There is no change in the magnitude. But take note, the velocity direction keep on changing. Once the, uh, once the object changes its velocity, then the particle is accelerating. It is accelerating towards the radius of the circle. Okay? Now, therefore, it is when, when, when the object moves around the curve, there is always an acceleration. And we call that as a centripetal acceleration. There is no change in, okay, there is no change in magnitude, but there is a change in direction. The change in direction causes a centripetal acceleration, which means that it provides a centripetal force also. Okay? So, therefore, uh, you cannot, again, you cannot, you are subjected by a force. And your force is a kind of centrifugal force. You tend to move away from the circle. Okay? Because the car is subjected by a centripetal force. It means it's towards the curve. The rider inside the car experience a kind of centrifugal force. A force that tends to move away from the circle. Okay? So, therefore, if we have this curve, Okay? And the object moves around the curve with a radius r. So therefore, there are possibility of two, two accelerations. Okay? There are two accelerations that might be happen or experienced by this object. First is we have the so-called tangential acceleration. Now, this tangential acceleration is the acceleration due to the change in magnitude. So therefore, in a straight line, there is no tangent line because the direction is the same as your displacement. Okay? So therefore, the acceleration is due to the change in magnitude only because you are moving in a straight line. You are not changing your your direction. So therefore, the, the acceleration is solely coming from the change in magnitude. So in the curve, we call that as the tangential acceleration. Another another acceleration is the so-called centripetal acceleration. Okay? The centripetal acceleration is due to the change in direction. Okay? Again, the tangential is due to the change in magnitude of the velocity. While the centripetal acceleration is due to the change in velocity direction of the particle. Okay? So, therefore, when you are to calculate how much is the acceleration while moving around the curve? It is a function by two accelerations. Okay? Now, take note that this is tangent. So, therefore, this must be perpendicular to the radius. So, therefore, the relationship or the angle between the tangential and centripetal must be 90. And these are the component of the total acceleration of the particle moves around the curve. So, therefore, this is the acceleration and it is actually the vector sum of these two vectors. So therefore, when you are calculating the magnitude of this acceleration, then you can use the uh, vector sum. Okay, the two. So again, it is the tangential acceleration. A sub C is the centripetal acceleration. So therefore, to calculate A, you have to square this using the Pythagorean theorem because if this is AC, you can, and this is a vector, you can put it here. So, therefore, this is a kind of right triangle. And the angle between them is 90. So, therefore, A will serve as the hypotenuse. Pythagorean theorem says that the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the two sides. So, solving for A, take square root. So, therefore, when you are calculating the acceleration, it should be the square root of the square of the centripetal plus the square of the tangential acceleration. That's it. You can provide the theoretical value of the acceleration. Okay. Now, what will happen if the... What is... What do you mean by when, when the acceleration, centripetal acceleration is not equal to zero and also 
the tangential is not equal to zero. So, so therefore, we can say that there is no change in magnitude, or there is a change in magnitude, velocity, velocity magnitude, and there is also a change in direction. So this object undergoes the so-called non-uniform circular motion. Non-uniform, it's because that the magnitude is keep on changing. So in other words, if we have this condition that A is greater than zero, again, but the tangential is equivalent to zero, which means that if there is no change in the velocity magnitude, we call this as the uniform circular motion, or we call this as UCM. This is our topic. So, in our topic, the dynamics of uniform circular motion means we will answer why it happens that when the object moves around the curve, why is it that it's, it, it, uh, why is it that a rotor ride can turn around a wall? Okay? So therefore, we have to study because most, in order to simplify the problem is we will assume that the velocity while moving around the curve, the velocity magnitude is the same. Okay? If you notice when you're riding a car, Riders, right, uh, the driver, when, when it turns around the curve, it tries to maintain its velocity. Okay? Because if, if the velocity is changing while moving around the curve, it is not safe to have that kind of riding. So therefore, in most problems we encountered, we will provide theoretically, and that's by the use of the uniform circular motion. Okay, so therefore we will now derive the 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 relationship. The question is what, how how is the centripetal acceleration related to the radius? Okay, another question is how centripetal acceleration related to the velocity, the maintained velocity of this particle. And what is the centripetal force? Because if there is a centripetal acceleration, then Newton's law says that this must be, there must be a force, so-called centripetal force. Okay? So, we will derive the relation. Okay? Now, if we consider two points in the curve while the particle moves around this curve whose radius is r. So let's say point 0.1, point 0.2. This is the initial and this is the final. So with that, we can say that at that point, tangent to that curve at that point, when we say tangent, this is a point that connects only in one point in a curve. So suppose this line, this is drawn at the scale. So suppose this is tangent to the curve, then that is the direction of the initial velocity. Call it as V1 at point 0.1. And this one, is perpendicular to R. This is drawn not to scale, okay? Perpendicular, okay? Then, at the final point, at point 2, same radius, okay? So, therefore, at this point, tangent to this curve is more or less this one. So, therefore, uh, okay, then, uh, at the final point, your, your velocity is V2, okay? So, take note that this is changing its direction from initial initial direction and this is the final direction. So therefore, we have the direction. Okay, now the arc length the arc length of this, because this is arc, okay, for a significant uh, significant change in position so this must be a curve. Okay, but if we have only a very very small distance or or tolerable distance between one and two this arc length will approximately be a straight line then call this as delta is means it is that this is a change in position and this can be a straight or this could be a curve okay so therefore we have this change in direction in terms of angle we call this as deflection angle. 
it was deflected from this direction towards this one. So therefore, the deflected angle is called as the deflection angle. Okay? Now, if we have this deflection angle, okay, now take note that this is, now we have also this angle from initial towards the final. So this deflection angle is the same as the central angle of this sector. Remember, this is a sector of a circle, okay? So therefore, this must be a central angle. So the deflection angle is always the same as the, the, the central angle because this is the principle of geometry. Okay? This is 90 degrees. This is 90 degrees. So therefore, whatever angle this, this will must be, this is drawn not to scale. No? So uh, this is drawn not to scale. But this remember, this is 90 degrees. This is 90 degrees. So whatever angle here will be the same angle at the central angle. Okay. So what will happen? Try to imagine that when this point 2 is very close to point 1, okay? Now, remember that we have this triangle, okay? We have this triangle. If this is a very, very small, so therefore, this this, this is must be the a straight line. The delta A is a straight line. So, therefore, we have this triangle. Those two sides are congruent. And we have this angle P. Now, try to imagine if this is, the, the final is very close to, very, very close to 1. So, therefore, this angle must be reduced, okay? So, if this will reduce, this must be reduced also because this angle are always the same. The deflection angle and the central angle. So, therefore, this will be the result. If you let this point be closer, point to be closer to 1, so we have this deflection angle shorter compared to this angle. Pero, but with whatever angle of the deflection angle, is the same as the angle of the central angle. Take note, this is still the triangle. Now, uh, this is now a straight line. This is very, very close. Try imagine a point that is very, very close. We call that as infinitesimal distance. Okay? So, a very, very small. Okay? So, therefore, but we still have the right, uh, we have still the triangle here. Whose sides are R, R, and this one is delta S. And this is P. Now, take note that this is vector. And this is a straight line. Call this as initial velocity. And this is the final velocity. And this angle is the same. Okay? If we have the initial velocity and we have the final velocity, connect a line from tail of the initial towards the final is so-called as the change in velocity. Okay? Call this as delta V. So, to close the polygon of the vectors, B1 and B2, the closing line is we have this, but this is tail to tail, so therefore this is not a vector sum. This is a change in velocity. So therefore, we have two triangles, okay? We have two triangles. Look at this one. This is a triangle whose sides are R, two sides are congruent, and we have this angle, uh, sign, which is delta S. And we have this central angle. Theta. Now, another triangle, it has a sides of, of B1 and B2. B1 is the velocity initial and B2 is the final velocity. And the angle is the deflection angle, which is equal to theta. And we have this side as the change in velocity. So, we have two triangles. Now, look at the two triangles. The two triangles are similar. Okay, what is the meaning of similar? They are similar, why? Because, remember, that this angle is the same as this angle, okay? This one, R, is the same as this side. Now, what is B1 and B2? Now, for uniform circular motion, remember, for a uniform circular motion, there is no change in magnitude. So, therefore, whatever velocity 1 will be the same as velocity 2, okay? So, B1 is equal to B2. So, it meaning, they are the same. So, in order for simplify, call it at B as B. So, therefore, this is B and this is B because they are the same. Why this one is the change in velocity? Okay, reminders. Why is it that other way? Remember that there is no change in velocity. Why is it that we have delta B? Delta B is a change in velocity. Okay? There is no change in magnitude but take note, this is due to the change in 
direction. So therefore, delta B is one side of this triangle, and we have this one. Delta is in another side, and they are uh, correspond to each other. Okay, so that if in geometry, if we have two triangles and they are similar, then we can apply the principle of ratio and proportion. So what is ratio and proportion? The ratio of the corresponding sign. What are the corresponding signs? The corresponding uh, delta B is will correspond to delta S. While the velocity 1 or velocity 2, because they are equal and this B, will correspond to R. Why? Because this theta is equal to this theta also, the other triangle. So therefore, take the ratio and proportion. Meaning, you can do it this way. Delta B is to delta S and B is to R. Or, you can say it. Delta B over B it must be delta S over R. So, any of that ratio, they will provide the same. So, do it this way. Delta B is to delta S. Whatever ratio of this corresponding side must be the same ratio of their corresponding size also. Mean, therefore, this should be B is to R. So, therefore, this is the result of the ratio and proportion. Okay. So, what is delta B? Delta B is the change in velocity direction. And this one is the change in position. Okay? While this one is the velocity. Okay? The velocity of the particle which is constant. And this is the radius of the circle. Okay? Now take note in mechanics that velocity is change in velocity is change in position per time interval. Okay? So, therefore, we can solve for delta S. Okay? Take note, this velocity is the average velocity. Okay? So, if you solve for delta S because we want to eliminate S because S, S does not exist in the problem, in the situation. So, we don't need delta S. So, therefore, we will eliminate S by Cross multiplying the definition of velocity, and this will result delta S is B dt. Okay? So substituting this delta S here, the result is. Okay? 